Hey plant gang, I want to talk to you about this plant in front of me. It's a salvia lyre leaf sedge, salvia lareda, uh, and it is a native to the southeastern United States. And you can see that this has colonized this area that's in front of me. Why it's called lyre leaf sedge is because of the shape of the leaf. It looks like an instrument, a harp, a lyre, and so you can use that as a bit of an ID characteristic. Now here in Tennessee, it's about uh, April 20th and you can see that this has been in bloom for a little bit of time. Uh, the flowers actually start low and then they'll continue up the stem. Uh, to give you this kind of nice bloom, the flowers themselves have a little bit of a rosy pink hue to them uh, that fade to white. Uh, now our native one, the one you find in the wild, tends to have just green leaves and so you'll see that quite often uh, the plants with just green leaves. Uh, but we've incorporated uh, this darker foliage variety into our landscape here. Okay, so again, this is a herbaceous perennial. We see it in uh, our native uh, woodlands in, East, Ten in uh, East Tennessee, throughout the eastern United States. And so it's quite common, uh, in particular in full sun areas. I often see it in areas where there's a little bit of moisture present. It likes that kind of moist, well-drained soil and it does well, but transfer to your garden, it also uh, does pretty well uh, in a little bit drier conditions. Now, as I look around where this plant is planted right here, I can see that it has seeded itself around just a little bit. Although it's a native plant, it will seed itself around and you need to be aware of that just a little bit. Now these darker lead varieties, they often seed again another dark uh, lead variety and so they do come true from seed. This is in the Lamaceae family which means that it's got square stems. Those things we, uh, in the mint family have square stems so that's going to be an easy identification for you. Uh, with, with salvias just in general, reach down, feel the stem and if you see square stems you're going to know probably that we're in that mint family and that can help us narrow it down just a little bit. I mentioned before that I consider this uh, a turf grass alternative uh, in some cases. Sometimes that's on purpose from people and sometimes it's really not on purpose and so uh, here in April as I drive around and I look at people's yards I often see this intermixed within turf grass probably not on purpose but it's beautiful uh, it is blooming for people who have not yet mowed their yards uh, you can see it getting up and blooming uh, and it can be quite attractive uh, oftentimes uh, the flowers in that case almost go a little bit to the purple side and so there can be a little bit of variation depending on cultivar if we're talking about the one that we find in our native woodland. Uh, so uh, check, check this one out a little bit closer. Uh, you're going to see almost a bunch forming rosette uh, where it grows out of the ground and it can propagate from those little bunches uh, that come around and spread that way. Uh, so this clump that we're looking at right now, maybe this was five or six plants and over the period of about three or four years it's come to colonize about a yard by a, a yard but I am seeing seedlings uh, where it has kind of escaped its area which you know it's a native plant that can be an okay thing uh, this is something that uh, attracts pollinators you might see a hummingbird you might see other bees uh, butterflies these kind of things on lyre leaf sedge uh, so it is a good thing to add uh, if that's something that you want to attract to your garden. So to wrap it up, Salvia lareda, this is the lyre leaf sedge, uh, one that you really need to know the facts about before you plant it in your landscape, even though it's a native plant, uh, but a great one you should consider. Uh, and really getting to know salvias just in general will be a benefit for you in the garden.